Hello, this video is a detailed look at hand painted techniques. We will be painting a plank of wood, but you should be able to apply these techniques to any hand painted object. Do check the description for links to the different stages. I'll be going through the modeling and setting up for texture painting very quickly. Do look at a card in the corner if you want more details about setting up for texture painting in 2.8. So yes, this whole tutorial will be in Blender 2.8, but the techniques can be applied to any program. So I scale my plank of wood in the Z and Y axes to make it plank shaped. Now it's important to remember that we have scaled it, so we will need to reset the scale when we've finished. I'll go into edit mode, control R, and do two loop cuts. I'll grab one of the loop cuts and just rotate it really slightly to add some variation to our wood. I'll grab the other one and scale it up really slightly. And lastly, I'll press three to go to face mode, grab the end face and scale that up. Next, I'll press 2 to go back to edge mode. Now, I'm unwrapping using seams, but you can just do a smart UV project. You'll get similar results, but it is better to do a manual unwrap, as it gives you a touch more control. I'll select the bottom edge going down here like this, with Alt left click, and press Control E, mark seams. So we've got a seam going down there. We need to unwrap the ends as well, so we'll go to face mode for that. 3, select that face with left click, and Control E, mark seams. The same for the other end, Control E, mark seams. So I have my plank of wood ready for unwrapping, but it's not quite ready. Remember, if I go into object mode now and press N, it's not scaled to one. So I need to set that scale with Control A, scale. All that will now be set to one. Now I can go into edit mode, select all with A, U to unwrap and unwrap. Let's go across to our UV editing slot here and you can see it's unwrapped nicely. What would be handy though, if these islands here, I'll go to island select, were in a better position. So I'll move them across, rotate them by the 90, and I can scale them up just a touch as well to make use of the space. So this is my middle section, and these are my end sections. Now we're all ready for painting. Let's go to the texture paint panel, or workspace, and create a new texture. This will be a base color texture and I'm changing the resolution to 2048 by 2048. We don't need the alpha, we don't need any transparency, so I'll untick that and press OK. That's added our material in here. Nothing changes in here, we just have to make sure it's selected. There's our material. I should have given this a brown coat, really. So when you create your new image, you might want to give it to color. I can easily change that now by going to my fill brush up here, and I can choose a nice brown color over the corner here. Let's darken that, and there's a good brown, and I'll fill it in in this section here. Now I'm painting in the UV image editor because I know it's going to overlap my edges. So when I'm painting, if I'd filled it in over here, we'd only get a tiny bleed over the edge, and sometimes you can see the seams. So it's good when you're doing your base color to use the UV image editor. So back to our object, and we can start painting. What I am going to do is just quickly bring down another window from here and change this to the shader editor, just so you can see what's going on. We are painting on this material here, and when we selected a new material over here, it put it into our shader editor. Let's pull this back across so I've got a nice big space to work with, and you'll notice my workspace disappears as soon as I do any changes over here to the layout. I just click on my brush again, and it brings it back. So the first thing I'm going to do is sample this color with S, and it brings up the pipette, click on my color, and I've started a color palette. So let's select that color and just vary it slightly. So I'm going to create a slightly redder color, maybe a touch darker, and just see what that looks like. That's great. Now this is fairly symmetrical, so I can do a symmetry on the Z axis here. So let's go down to symmetry and turn on the Z axis. If you really want to be shortcutty, then you can do it on the Y axis as well. And maybe I'll do that when I come to the very ends. It is important to turn your mirror off later on when you come to the detailed section, but I'll explain more about that later. So let's fill in some of this color and just check that it's mirroring across. I'm going to undo those strokes because I created one before I did the mirror, so let's do that again. Remember to include the sides, and I'm just doing a real base layer of color. Let's choose a slightly different color, maybe slightly lighter. Oh, I should have sampled that color as well. So once you've got the color there, you can press plus and it will sample it and you've got another one in your palette. So I'm going slightly lighter now. 
that's great I'll bring my brush down a touch with F and a slightly different color so let's plus that one so we've got it in our palette and let's go to a more sort of ready color somewhere around there and just creating some light strokes so I'll add that to my palette with the plus sign and I'll go slightly greener for this one just change my brush light just change my brush size slightly again and bring in a tiny bit of green so there's our base layer and if you zoom out it doesn't look too bad so it's important to remember how close will you be to these objects do you need to add a huge layer of detail? If they're a minor object in your scene and they're in the distance, you can go to this level of detail and get away with it. But we want a nice detail plane, so we're going to go into the detailed stage. So for this, we bring the brush down slightly, and I'm going to create some real grain to my wood. So let's start with a nice dark color. We'll start with our darkest, and we'll actually bring that even darker, and add that to our palette and I'm going to create some grain. I don't like this brush at the moment. It's a bit too wide. So I'll go down to my curve and I'm going to change it to the more pointy one. So that's that brush there. Let's see how that's doing. Okay, that's better because it comes to a sharper point, but also I can change my radius pen pressure up here. Notice I've got the strength on. I've just turned the radius on as well. Now when I draw, when I draw very lightly with my pen, you can see it adding the details because I can change the radius with how hard I push. So if I push lightly and harder in the middle here, and then lighter as I go along, you can see that grain appearing. That's why a pen tablet, a graphics tablet, is very, very useful. So let's go to our end now, and you can see what's going to happen. Because it's mirrored, I have to watch out, and it's going to go all the way across my shape. So just watch out for that. The other bits you might need to watch out for, which I should have said in the earlier stage, is bits like this, where you've painted your bigger details on, and you haven't been particularly careful of the edges. So what we can do in that case is go to our smear brush, which is this brush here with the little finger. Make the brush size a bit bigger, and just smear that across so that our edges aren't so obvious. Not too bad there, not too bad there. Perhaps just a touch around here. So the smear brush, very handy for sort of rubbing things in and getting rid of edges and seams. Still a bit of a seam there, so I'll just go over that a bit more. It's quite a light brush, so you might want to turn the strength up. Okay, back to our details, so back to our main brush. What I'll do actually, I'll bring these out so you can read what they say. And if you ever lose this panel, just click on the brush again. Okay, so I've still got my dark brush selected, and I'm going to do some more details. Down to the other end, brush small, and remember push hard if you've got a tablet, and then soften it as you go and then just lightly push on the edges so it slowly builds up into a bigger grain. Now if you're feeling really adventurous you can go for a knot so let's use this space in here and go for a circle knot just like this. Create a couple of rings like that. Looks kind of interesting at the moment. We've only done the dark parts at the moment, so don't panic that it's not looking completely like wood. But maybe we'll have another knot just up here. Do remember there's more courses like this on gabbit.co.uk, where you can go from beginner right through to advanced levels. Also, I'll put a card in the corner for my recommended graphics tablets. The links are also in the description of this video. I strongly recommend you getting a graphics tablet. It really can help tremendously. Lovely job. So a few more of these details around the place. And I'm going to quickly turn my mirror off now and do the sides. Because if I try and do the sides now, you'll get two lines. So I'll turn my mirror off for a moment. 
to create some detail along the side. What I could do is actually mirror this across the X, so I'll undo that and mirror across the X. Remember, it depends how wobbly your plank is. Mine isn't too wobbly in terms of the original model, but it's not completely symmetrical, so do watch out for that. So I am time-lapsing a few bits and pieces just to help out with the timings. Okay, let's zoom out and see how we're getting on. So we've added another layer of detail and just the dark spots, and from this distance it's looking really nice if I do say so myself. But we could do with a few highlights on the edges of this detail that we've added. So let's go to a lighter brush, something like this. Bring the brush size down just a touch. Oh, and remember to change your symmetry. Back to the Z and take the X off. And I'm just creating some highlights down the edge of each of my crevices. So you can see now when I zoom out, it looks like those tiny edge bits are really standing out now. I can do it in the rings here as well. I might just turn the strength down a touch here and just brush lighter with my brush. I have got the pen pressure turned on with the strength. So I'm just surrounding these black lines with a highlight brush, as I'm going to call it. The very edges catch the light, so that's why we lighten them up. So wherever you've got a crevice, you usually have a sort of highlight next to it. On the very corners here, you can really make this stand out by making that corner pop with these brighter colours like this. And you can see that looking quite nice there. Okay, so you can add a bit more detail to yours. You can even try some dents in your wood. So let's say there's a dent coming in here. I'll get my dark brush and I'll create a sort of dent that's coming here. And then you just make that fairly dark and then slowly bring it out. So there's a slight gradient across here. Maybe make my brush bigger. Brushing fairly lightly at the moment, so it's a low strength coming out here. And I'll turn the strength down a bit more, brush, brush bigger for this bit just out here. Now you can see my brush strokes there, so I could go across the smear brush and just smear that in. So it looks a bit more uniform. And pull it out like this. Might turn the strength of the smear brush up a touch. I have this habit of whispering whilst I'm doing painting and sort of explainer tutorial videos like this. It must be because I've watched too much of Bob Ross or something like that. I suppose it's just a very calming, relaxing thing to do is painting. So with every sort of crevice you get a highlight. So let's go back to our draw brush and pick our highlight. Bring my brush size down slightly for the highlights and highlight this area up here. So it's as if this bit stands out. And I think we're sort of getting there. It doesn't look amazing, so I just need to bring this darkness out a touch more as well. And I might even go a tiny bit darker right in here. So we've got a bit that sort of juts out like this. I'm probably going to have to highlight this edge more as well so it stands out a bit more. So you can see that sort of jutting out like that. That's if you want to go a stage further I would say. I'm just going to tidy this bit up, make this section longer. It takes a bit more effort this bit. Like I say, not for the faint-hearted that bit, a bit more detail but if you want to go to that level you can. And it may be that you want very detailed wood and then you can get your dark brush and do some very fine lines along your wood like so. And you can sort of see the detail coming out there a bit more. Maybe I'll go a tiny bit wider with my brush. But again, it depends on your competence as an artist, how confident you feel about these things. I think it's well worth practicing, so you should have a go at these things and not worry too much about the finished result. But you might really want this in your game and therefore maybe stop at the previous level where you feel a bit more comfortable. 
Okay, so a touch more detail there. You could as well go in with the highlight brush and highlight a few areas as well. It's always good to go next to the dark lines that you've already drawn. Remember to turn off your symmetry where you need to. The ends don't tend to be a straight line as this, and it is better to have some sort of curve to them really, so they go out like this more. So a bit more of a wood grain effect going on there. So the last stage is the highlights of the edges of the wood. And for this, I find it easier to use a screen brush or your normal brush in screen mode. So at the moment it's mix, so the color that you've chosen will just be plonked on top of the other color and kind of remove the old one. If we change this across to screen, which is in the lighten section, so you've got add, screen, lighten, color dodge, but the screen is the one I find the most effective. It is affected by the color you're choosing, so a nice yellowy color for wood would be great, but it's more to do with the tone, so the lighter the tone, the more effect the brush will have. So all this screen brush is doing is lightening the colors around the edges. So if I make it a fairly big brush, for these sort of screen brushes, or multiply if you're trying to darken areas, I would suggest a low strength and just test it out. That's still quite high. There we go, that's about right. So I'm just softly going over the edges. On the very corners, it's quite nice to do a fairly good amount on these. And in fact, I'm going to undo this and put my mirror on. So watch out for the very deep crevices. You don't really want to go over those, but you can just kind of go across the other ones and not worry too much. And can you see it's just highlighting that edge now. It's actually tricky to see the edge down here and a way I can change that is by changing the shading method up here. So originally it was on this one which is sort of a shadeless and it just shows the texture whereas if I go onto the sort of rendered version you can see I've still got flat shading on my object so I can see the edges. I will turn that off eventually but it is quite handy to be able to see where the edges are so you can paint them with these highlights. You can go a bit wobbly if you like, so it looks like the wood hasn't got a sharp edge, so don't have to follow the edge entirely. It's helpful when you get to the corners to follow the edge because with the shading from your scene will be affected by the corners a bit more. That one may not be so successful with the wobble there, but it looks quite nice from this angle. I haven't worked very hard on this side, so I won't spend too long on this area. Now let's go back to the shadeless, which is what the smooth shading will eventually look like. We've got a nice edge there, and now I'm going to turn the mirror off and just go in and make some details. So there needs to be a bit more of this wood popping out here. And just a few details around the place with my screen brush. Now if there's any areas that you want to darken, you can change from the screen mode to the multiply mode. So there's a darken area here. So they've separated it into areas into 2.8. The lighten area is here and the dark area is here. And I choose multiply because that preserves the colors quite nicely. So I can bring the colors in here down a bit. Again, quite a soft strength. Subtlety is often the best way and just build things up slowly. And I just realized I did something silly with the multiply. So I chose the multiply brush, but I didn't choose a lower tone. So you do have to bring the tone down as well. It did still work, but it wasn't as strong as it is when you've got a lower tone. So if I do it now, you'll see the multiply brush working that bit harder. So a low tone for the multiply and a light tone for the screen. And sometimes it's nice just to add a bit of variation in the colors by using the multiply brush in different places. 
and a lot of the time I like to change between the screen and the multiply to bring things out and push things in so it's a good idea to set up a separate brush for your screen and a separate brush for your multiply. I do have tutorials on that for setting up brushes and I'll try and remember to put a card in the corner. So the last bit is just a time lapse of me going over with the screen and multiply brushes just to highlight areas and darken areas. I'm not too pleased with this divot here but it just about works and I'll tidy up the other end so at least it's a complete finished plank. And there we have it, a nice plank of wood for you. Make sure you go across to your image and save your texture. So save as and save your texture. And do remember if you want to add a slight bit of bump to this, you can plug this into the normal maps with a bump map node. But that depends on the style and look you're going for. The very last thing that you might want to do is go out to your layout section, into object mode and change it to smooth shading so it doesn't have the sharp edges which you can kind of see in rendered mode at the moment. In order to do that, you right click on your object in object mode and press shade smooth. So there we have it, our hand painted plank. The most important thing to remember here is that you go for the base colors, base detail, and then build up the detail levels. Also remember how close you'll be to your object in your game or scene, and that determines the detail levels that you need to go to. Do check the website gabbit.co.uk for more tutorials like this. And thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.